This time on Jairus of All, I'm in the middle of making the Manus Blades and I'm absolutely sick of them. So I'm going to take a break and make my first knife. This is one of the blades from the Manus Blades and I spent the majority of the day yesterday fixing it because I didn't do a very good job in the first place. And I used a 2x72 belt grinder that my friend has here in his shop. It gave me a lot of practice and he uses it to make knives and I want to make a knife because after I got this done and I put it together, it didn't work again because some of the stuff has changed and I'm very frustrated with it. So I'm just gonna make a knife now. And this is the design that I wanna use. It's by Mad Hatter Knives. He's a friend of mine on Instagram. He sent me a couple of ideas that he had and I really like this one. I asked him if I could use it and he said, go for it. And I'm gonna steal some of my friend's 1084 carbon steel and make my first knife. He also has this bandsaw, so it makes this whole process extremely fast compared to the tools that I'm used to using. switch to the belt grinder for accuracy. I've used this fair amount with the Manus blades making parts, so I have some experience with this and I think I'm pretty good at it. Not to toot my own horn, but honk honk. ground to where I need it to be from the template. So I took the template off, cleaning off the stuff from it because I'm going to scribe my line for the bevel. And this is going to be bevel on one side. I think it's called Kataba. I, I think that's what it was. I looked it up earlier. It's the name for a single beveled knife. It's a Japanese name. My idea is that since this is a straight, flat, single bevel, it's going to be easier than trying to match bevels. Kind of an experiment. <laughs> I should probably measure this, but I think eyeballing will be fine. With this having a super tiny tip at the end, I know it's gonna be a little bit difficult because that'll get hot easy and I'll lose my temper if I'm not careful when I'm grinding at the end, but this is really thick material. I think I might have to grind it down. I want this to be a very sharp little knife. So I might end up doing this bevel just to make sure it's flat and nice and then take the thickness of it down which would be a lot of sanding, but it would, uh, it would make it what I want it to be. This is ground very close to the final shape that I want, but I think you're not supposed to grind to your final shape, which makes sense because of scale and everything until after you're done with your heat treat. And I don't know a whole lot about this, but you stick it in, you get it red, you put it in oil, that makes it hard, then you temper it in the oven. That takes a long time. I talked to my buddy, he said it's two hours at 400, hour off, two hours at 400, something like that. I'm supposed to preheat the oil, gotta warm the forge up, I'm gonna stick a tube in there, stick this in, that way the heat's even on it. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of wing it. We'll see how it turns out. Oh, and it's got just the slightest of warps after grinding it ever so slightly. So after it gets warm, I need to try to get it straight. I don't know, we'll see what happens. There we go, nice tube. Oil 
preheat stick in preheat. All right, here we go. My tube's getting red, so I'm gonna stick this thing in. And the knife is going in. Can I get it to stand? Oh yeah. And then I think it's time to quench it. I don't know if it's time to quench it, but it looks like it's bright enough to me, so. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty orange. So here we go, three. Two, one. Whoosh. Now it's warped. Since it's warped, I'm gonna I'm gonna heat it back up. Do it again. See if I can make it straight. I don't know if this is what you do but it's what I'm gonna try to do. <laughs> so now it's cooled and it's almost straight. I'm gonna try that one more time because that actually seems like it worked really well. That's a very flat piece of steel, so I'm just kind of holding it against it, hoping that it makes it flat. Find out. I mean, it's as flat as I can tell with my eyeball, so I'm happy with it. Round two, fight. Hey, it's straight. Now it's hard, or it should be. So I'm gonna let this air cool, and then I start the long tempering cycle, which I'm not gonna film because it looks like this, me putting it in the oven and taking it out. While the blade's tempering, I cleaned up a space so that I can make the handle scales and I decided that I'm gonna use some aluminum with some carbon fiber on the sides of it. So I'm gonna put some resin down and then lay the carbon on that and then put the aluminum on that once it soaks through and hopefully that will keep me from getting bubbles. And I got these cheap silicon mats on Amazon. They say they're supposed to peel away from resin once it's cured. Silicon should, we'll find out. And the carbon fiber is uh, not what you normally see. Everybody uses two by two twill to put on stuff, or at least that's the most common kind. This is unidirectional, which I think will look really interesting with the design of the knife. I just gotta let it cure and clean up my mess. The knife is tempered and the epoxy is cured. I ground off some of the scale on the spine so that you could see the color change. I ended up setting my oven at 380 degrees instead of 400 for two two hour cycles because my oven swings drastically in temperature so I didn't want to over temper it. And it still looks like it might be a little over tempered but the epoxy is also cured and I wanna peel that out. So let's see how it goes if I can peel it out. <laughs> and the silicone is coming off pretty well. Hey, look, it's peeling this way. Cool. All right, well, hopefully that's the uh, bottom side that I wasn't worried about bubbles because that has a lot of bubbles in it. There it goes. Moink. Look at that, bubble free. It's grinding time. Ready? Mark Jesus. <laughs> has just the tiniest warp in it. And it's really obvious when you look at the grind on the back because there's a little part with scale still on it that isn't shiny like the rest of it. 
if I can grind enough material away from this, which I think I can to get that out, I think it might come back. But if I do that, I have zero room for error when I go to do the bevel. So I'm going to start doing this flat and start that bevel and see if taking off that surface layer for some reason all of a sudden makes that go back to where it's supposed to be. I mean, I feel like that's really wishful thinking, but it's worth a shot instead of just hoping that I grind this perfectly my first time because I, I don't trust myself not to screw that up. Time for the bevel. The issue is that I have a bevel on there, but it doesn't come back far enough now that I removed this material. So I need to grind a new bevel. So I'm, I started a flat back here because I'm almost to my edge on that bevel right there. And it needs to be, I want it to be bigger. So I need to take all that material away while being very careful not to overheat this tiny little needle tip. This is difficult. I'm, it, it, this looks really nice right now, and this is the time when I would mess it up, if I'm going to mess it up, so. I'm getting really close. There's just a little bit left, but I'm also just about to meet the backside to create my edge. So I have to be very careful right now because with everything getting so thin, now's when I'm gonna cook it. I think it's only gonna take a couple more grinds and that spot's gonna be gone and I'm gonna be there. Finally got this to the point where I'm happy with it. I went up through the grits, including micron level structured abrasives and realized it was too difficult to get an even finish with that. So I went back down the grits until I got to a point where it looked even and I was very pleased with it. But during that grinding process, I knocked off this corner right here just a little bit and it made the blade curved right at the end. So I cut it flat. But also when I was grinding, I brought a bevel onto this part of the handle, which does not look right. So I'm going to fix those things. And there's a quote by a Japanese priest called Dogen that I follow with most of my projects. And it's that if you let objects convey onto you, that is true artistic expression. But if you convey yourself onto them, that is delusion. So basically in my projects, when things start to go wrong, I change my plan to work with the part that I'm working on. If the object doesn't want to do what I want it to do, I change myself to work with the object, more or less, which is probably why the Manus blades are not working out very well because I'm trying to make them exactly what I want them to be instead of changing my plan. I really like the original design that Mad Hatter had for this knife, but since I messed it up, this is an opportunity for me to change it and make it a little more my own. So I scanned this and edited that to make it into something that works with the mistakes that I made and printed that out so that I have a new design where the finger recess here is much larger and removes the two sections that I messed up. And it'll make a really small connection between the handle and the blade that makes it look very delicate since it is because this bevel makes that blade super tiny. It's even just a little springy right on the tip. So 
New Design. This is very close to being finished. The handle scales were sent back to the shape of it and then I put these bevels on so that you can see it's carbon, aluminum, carbon. And I got everything to match by using these little bolts to keep everything attached and aligned while I did that work. And the original plan was to use these nails as pins to put these on when I epoxy them to the blade, but these fit better. So I think what I'm gonna do is shave those to the right length and then cut a little slot so that I can screw them in with a flat blade screwdriver when they get epoxied on. But these need to get painted so that they're glossy and beautiful before I glue them on. I've said before how useful airbrushes are and how I think everyone should have one because then you can spray whatever paint you want. But the one barrier to entry is you have to have a compressor. Well, now you don't. This is an auto lock airbrush. I saw it in another YouTube video and I contacted the company and said, hey, if you send me one of those, I'll show it in a video if it's good. I've had this for a while and I've used it a lot and I love it. They didn't pay me for this and they didn't sponsor the video, but they did send me this for free. But I'm endorsing it. This thing's awesome. It's super portable. It runs for like an hour and a half. It charges really quick and it works fantastic. I just sprayed those scales with two part automotive clear coat paint. You don't have to worry about lines hanging anywhere. You don't have to buy a compressor and you can get an airbrush and they're not very expensive. I'll have a link in the description. The bolts that I'm using is the pins. Need the heads ground off and a little bit of the other things. So this is my rig. Little wing nut with some pliers to grind the stuff off. Scales are on, and it turned out really well, which I wasn't sure about because I had to do it backwards from the way people normally do with wood, where they glue the scales on and then they finish them and they just use oil or something, they can just wipe it off of the blade. Since I use two-part automotive clear, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get that off, so I finished the handles first, then attached them, but I had to make sure that the epoxy didn't get all over everything. It worked out, and it looks really good, but it's not done yet. In the past, I have etched knives, and I think it really sets them off and makes them look really cool. 
So I'm gonna do that to this. It's finished. I did two different levels of etching so you could tell a little bit more what this is. And I call it the filigree wasp. I, I drew this on paper and then I scanned it in the computer, made a digital file, cut it out with a vinyl cutter. And I picked the wasp because I felt that the knife was similar to that animal. And I did it curly because everything on this is so geometric, I thought it would be cool to have something that completely contrasted with that. And I think this looks relatively similar to a wasp because of the tiny connection, just like they have between the sections of their body. I sharpened this thing up as best I could and I got it to the point where I could shave hair with it. But I wanted to see what the true potential of the knife was, so I called up the professional over at Gleaming Edge Sharpening and had him bring out the true potential of this knife to see what it can do when it's as sharp as it can get. Now it's time to cut stuff. I've made some stuff with sharp edges on it before, but this is my first knife that I've made start to finish. Let me know in the comments if you think I did all right on it, or if you wanna see me do more in the future because I kinda of wanna make some more knives now. But now that this is all done, it's time to get back to the Manus Blades. If you're interested in any of the stuff that I use in this video, I'll have links to most of it in the description to save you from looking for it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is your new home. That's where you live now.